A big story that came out today, AEW and DDT have a working relationship. Chris Daniels, which is a VP of Talent Relations. A lot of people didn't know that. I, I was surprised by, by the amount of comments from people. Uh, Chris Daniels made an announcement uh, as part of the DDT 25th anniversary. It's wild that this company's been around for 25 years. Uh, DDT Talent will be brought in to work AEW shows. Now, this is where things get interesting because this goes back to a couple weeks ago when someone at WWE... The day of the Ring of Honor announcement called me and he was like, hey, listen, uh, today's the day. I'm like, OK, what's what's happening? He goes, I'm pretty sure it could still be Ring of Honor, but I'm pretty confident that they're talking to a international pro wrestling company for some sort of agreement. And I was like, OK, like what? He goes, well, I think it's going to involve a tape library. And this kind of coincides with the streaming deal that they're working on. They're trying to figure out. So I was like, okay, you know what? This kind of is falling into place here. Now, the question is why DDT, right? And, and I want to get your opinion on this. Why DDT? Before you give me that, and I want to let everybody know, Cyber Agent is the company that owns DDT, NOAA, uh, GAN Pro, and Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. And it's under the banner of CyberFight. They have a streaming platform for their content also. But what happens here and why? Why are you going after you know, why do you want to work with them over other companies? Uh, you know, notable AEW talent that's worked in these companies. It's Michael Nakazawa, obviously, Thunder Rosa, Rio, and and Kenny Omega. We all know his connection with DDT. So this is very interesting. I personally believe that my source is correct. If there is this deal happening, we found out the international promotion is, uh, you know, uh, DDT. Does this lead to a tape library and does this bring us one step closer to figuring out what that streaming deal is? Well, I know I unloaded a ton of stuff here, but I want to get your opinion on this. Wh what happens with this? That is uh, a great question because I feel like um, this relationship, you know, it, it was announced um, at the time when Chris Daniels did the video that it was going to be the uh, a relationship with DDT, but um, then, of course, Michael Nakazawa later clarified that it is everybody under the umbrella, so it's also going to include Tokyo Joshi Pro, um, which Hikaru Shida just worked uh, uh, two nights ago, and, of course, um, Yuka Sakazaki is there, and um, pretty much a, a good number of AEW Joshi talent um, works out of Tokyo Joshi Pro, and so um, there is benefit to the relationship um, as far as that's concerned. Now, yeah, we talk about having a video library. Of course, uh, those are kind of tied in with um, the Wrestle Universe platform, right? And um, I actually watch stuff out of Wrestle Universe. I do feel like that's a pretty straightforward platform for streaming wrestling content. And if AEW doesn't have like a really big deal in the works in terms of like, you know, an HBO Max or something along those lines um, and just needs a streaming type of platform, uh, you know, I, I would actually like to see them at least from a technological and functional standpoint, I would like to see them kind of pull what Wrestle Universe is doing, uh, and, uh, build that functionality. And it's got pretty much everything you could need as far as a streaming service is concerned. And it's really easy to navigate. Uh, that's, that's kind of what I would like to see, um, as far as what we get out of that. Cause like we saw Takeshi to come over. Uh, from DDT last year, uh, he came in, he worked The House Always Wins, and then he worked uh, those couple of episodes of, uh, of AEW Dark Elevation. Uh, as far as what that actually brings to like the Dynamite fold, I don't actually uh, know if they could actually bring them in. I don't, I don't think it'll do... Uh, and this, listen, I, I could be wrong on this, and I, and I follow as much wrestling as possible. Sometimes I miss some stuff. I get what DDT does. Uh, I don't, you know, it's it's a different product. It's a very different product compared to what people expect out of a traditional Japanese pro wrestling promotion. Uh, they're not a traditional pro wrestling, uh, Japanese pro wrestling promotion. They do things a little bit differently. Noah's Noah being affiliated with uh, the parent company kind of gets me thinking a little bit more, but. As far as talent coming in, I think it's always great to have talent. I don't think it's going to affect ratings, but to me, it's this is the the assessed value stuff that I'm into for AEW. This adds another layer of value to your company. 
you are attempting to come up with some sort of streaming partner uh, that you desperately need. And and not in a bad way. You do need this because you don't know what's happening with Ring of Honor. Uh, Tony said that he's going to continue shows with Ring of Honor. And they're running uh, the pay-per-view as is. They're not going to be on Sinclair, as far as I understand. I can't imagine that they're going to continue. No, on Tony Sinclair. said that uh, specifically during the media scrum at Revolution that uh, he was planning on leveraging the current relationships uh, that AEW has with Warner Media. So yeah. I don't know exactly what that means, but to me, that sounded like uh, not planning on running anything with Sinclair Broadcasting. Yeah. Uh, Listen, you you have a platform that people are very much enjoying with HBO Max. Now, the, the Discovery merger, maybe that's playing a part. I know that they were working heavy on incorporating some infrastructure changes to the way that HBO Max is done because it's going to be, you know, it's essentially all the streaming platforms, Discovery Plus and that. It's going to end up in one umbrella eventually. So you need to incorporate live content. You need to incorporate pay-per-views. This is a perfect, I mean, you put Ring of Honor on, on HBO Max. It's first run programming over there. Now you have the archive stuff of Noah and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Noah, DDT, uh, Tokyo, uh, Joshi Pro. You have all these variables now coming in the mix on top of your three years of content with AEW Dark and Dark Elevation and the pay-per-views. It's looking valuable now, you know, when you look at this and you have well, you have Ring of Honor, you have this, you have that. You're like, okay, what else are they going to add? What else can they bring to our platform? This is, you know, this is, a lot of this is business end stuff, which I love, and nobody else cares about, but we are seeing something interesting getting built here. And if they're able to do it with HBO Max, I think that's what they need to aim for. We know that Tony doesn't really do little stuff, and that's that's the thing about Ring of Honor also. Do you think they're going to run Ring of Honor as if it's Ring of Honor, or do you think it's going to become more like a feeder system, like an NXT-type product for AEW? Um, well, again, thinking about just what Tony Khan has said, uh, it sounds to me like uh, kind of a hybrid of both. You know, he kind of used NXT 2.0 as his example of uh, what, why he was going to be the booker for Ring of Honor that he kind of, he seemed to imply, and of course this is just me picking out his words, uh, because using NXT 2.0 as the example, he had said that, you know, that was transformed as a more suitable feeder system for what Raw and SmackDown, uh, what feeds their bottom line. And he seemed to be kind of implying that he wants Ring of Honor to feed AEW's bottom line. And so I do think it is going to be more of a developmental system. But at the same time, it's also going to be run independently. The thing is, um, uh, the the big, you know, talking about the business side of things, uh, the, the big difference between Ring of Honor and AEW is that uh, Tony Khan owns Ring of Honor. That was yeah. his purchase. You know, uh, AEW has... Um, uh, its ownership is is a little more cloudy because it's actually owned by by Shad Khan and the the trademarks yeah. were actually registered to the Jacksonville Jaguars and there's all of that but like Tony Khan purchased Ring of Honor like that is his uh and so that's it Tony um, Khan it, to uh, Ring of Honor he's done with AEW uh, yes. going right to he got his father <laughs> took the rug right under him <laughs> You heard it here first. The consortium, <laughs> you know, come out like Ric Flair. The consortium they didn't. It's me, you know, do the whole thing. And now there you go. Another great fantasy booking by Andrew Zarian here. Yes. <laughs> terrible. Fan <laughs> Let me just say another terrible fantasy booking by Andrew Zarian here. No, I, I think it's 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 very interesting. Um, now, now the question is with TV rights deals. We know that WWE at the time when they acquired WCW could not put WCW on any other non-Viacom station. Will that play a part with this deal? Because AEW is on a Turner property, obviously. He's Warner Media Group. Will Warner Media Group allow Tony Khan to have a pro wrestling product on another channel? Even though it's not AEW, it's still his. There's a lot of this that's going on here, right? There's a lot of moving parts. I'm going to tell you one great piece of advice. Not you the world i'm gonna put this out there no matter how independent you think you are you still have somebody to answer to and that's the people paying you and those are the advertisers that's your tv partner that's you know these there are all these other variables that come into play will will time warner want 
uh, or, or or be okay with him doing this on another platform. I don't know about that. And that's why I'm hoping that this continues, this HBO Max thing happens. Yeah, I, I want to see, the, you know, honestly, uh, as a fan, I want to see it be HBO Max simply because um, it's, it's in, uh, an incredibly large platform. Um, and there's... I, I believe of the streaming platforms, aren't they the third biggest? Let's say, yeah. um, you know, I, I I don't know if I can actually verify that, uh, but I think I saw that yesterday. But just thinking about how big of a platform HBO Max is and how much exposure that could be as far as live content is concerned, I know that a thing people want because it's been uh, eight years. I can't believe I had to look at a calendar for that, but it's been eight years of the WWE Network, and people are kind of used to the idea that. Um, you just subscribe nine ninety nine a month, and that's your pay per view. Um, I genuinely don't think we're going to see that. I think that um, I, I, I've I've heard a lot uh, out of AW that they're really pleased with the attach rate um, that is coming with pay per view buys right now. That we're looking at, you know, uh, Dave reported uh, in the Observer this past week. Um, that Revolution did somewhere between, uh, I think, upwards of like 167,000 buys. I, th I think um, it was like overall the estimate is 167, but I think it was like a $6 million pay-per-view. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and thinking about, the, you know, that's the second largest uh, AEW pay-per-view right behind All Out. And uh, thinking about the percentage of the viewership that's buying the pay-per-views is, is huge for pro wrestling. Like, I don't think... Uh, from a percentage standpoint, any wrestling company in really history has pulled um, that large of a percentage of their base purchasing the pay-per-views. And I think that uh, there's a lot of that they're going to want to hang on to. And so uh, if they end up in an HBO Max scenario, I think we're still looking at pay-per-view. And so that's that's one thing. Uh, that... Same thing. Uh, I, I would say... All the conversations I've had with people at Warner Media, not necessarily mm -hmm. uh, AEW, I don't think they want to give up that BR Live or wherever they go, right? Because they, they're a partner. BR Live is Warner Media. They're making a, a lot of money from these pay per views when pay per views are now showing uh, that people are willing to buy pay per views. They're, those Jake Paul pay per views are doing phenomenal. Uh, you, you're seeing a lot of boxing. Box Heavyweight boxing is back with tremendous pay per views. Uh, we are now in a different model, and when you tell people, listen, once every couple months you got to pay 50 bucks versus once every month you got to pay 50 bucks, I think they'll be okay.